Okay, so right now we're going to use the periodic table to determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons for any isotope of an atom. If you don't know what protons, neutrons, or electrons are, uh, please look up my video on subatomic particles. Okay, so looking at the periodic table, you see a bunch of squares, and I'm going to use my favorite element, carbon, as the illustrative example here. And you'll notice that one of the numbers in each of these squares has no decimal, and one of the numbers does have a decimal. Okay, so the number that does have a decimal, it could be either at the top or the bottom, so you have you can't just memorize, it's, oh, it's always at the top, it's always at the bottom. It could be either. This, with the decimal, that is the atomic mass. That is the average mass of all of the isotopes of this element. Okay, and so this is kind of based actually on carbon, um, and we'll talk more about that later when we talk about the mole. Okay, the next number you'll see is the one that doesn't have a decimal. It will never have a decimal. That can either be at the top or the bottom on a periodic table, depending on the table. That is our atomic number. Okay, and we already know that the atomic number is the same thing as the number of protons. The number of protons is characteristic for each element. And your periodic table probably has a symbol right in the middle. Symbol. So that's our chemical symbol. So it would help if I could spell, wouldn't it? <laughs> Don't mind me chemical symbol. Uh, so in chemical formulas we don't have to write out the entire name and some periodic tables also include the name of the element as well. Some of them don't. It depends on the table that you're looking at. So that's the full name. Okay, so atomic mass symbol, name, atomic number. Okay, so knowing that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons, and we know that protons have a mass of 1 AMU, we also know that the atomic mass here, the units here, could be atomic mass units, or AMUs, or as we're going to find out later, this is grams per mole. Okay, but for right now, we're going to focus it on being atomic mass units. So looking at this, we know of the subatomic particles, protons and neutrons have mass. Electrons do not contribute significantly to the mass. So we know if we've got six protons here, the mass has to be at least six because each proton has a mass of one AMU. Each neutron has a mass of one AMU. So to determine the number of neutrons, all we have to do is take this mass, which is the total of protons and neutrons, and subtract out the number of protons. So atomic mass minus the number of protons. So in this example, Our atomic mass is about 12, so we can round that. And our number of protons is 6, so carbon has 6 neutrons. Okay, and you're going to absolutely love this. So the, the number of protons was extremely easy. The number of neutrons had a little bit of math. Number of electrons, no math. Okay, so our number of electrons for any non-ion, meaning it's just the normal element, element only, equals the number of protons. So all we're looking at today is just the normal element hasn't gained any electrons or lost any electrons, which will happen, and that's what forms ions. But 
for this case, it's, if it's just the element that we're looking at, just you looking at the periodic table, has just the name of carbon, not carbon ion. Carbon wouldn't form ions, but that was just an example. Then the number of electrons equals the number of protons, which we know equals the atomic number. So in this case, the number of electrons is going to equal 6. Number of protons also equals 6. So there we were able to determine the number of neutrons, protons, and electrons for an element, not an ion. Thank you for listening.